Hey everybody, it's Chuck Adica here for a Healthier Michigan podcast. For the next few episodes, we've got something different for you. I recently went up to Mackinac Island. I was invited up for the Mackinac Policy Conference. It's held each year, and it was a great opportunity for me to sit down and talk with some of the attendees about their own personal health and wellness journeys, and also uh, get the latest on what some of the guests are doing to serve health initiatives that impact the community around them. We hope you enjoy these bonus episodes, and we'll have our next regular episode for you on June 13th. On this bonus episode, we're talking to organizations from around the state of Michigan focused on protecting, preserving, and enhancing the state's natural environment to ensure sustainable recreation use for Michiganders and visitors to the state. Today, we'll be talking with the president and CEO of the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy, Mark Wallace president of the Belle Isle Conservancy, Michelle Hodges, director of the Michigan DNR, Dan Ekinger, and the executive director of CAS Community Social Services, Faith Fowler. To kick off this episode, we'll chat with Mark Wallace. Mark has been president and CEO of the Conservancy since 2014. The Conservancy's vision is to transform Detroit's international riverfront, the face of the city, into a beautiful, exciting, safe, accessible, world-class gathering place for all. So Mark Wallace is here. Good to see you. It's good to be here. So you just left a big presentation. The mayor was there. and uh, He did just an amazing job. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's inspiring to hear him think about Detroit and the way he approaches it. You know, he really cares about the people of the city. And he really focuses a lot on the function. You know, what's great about the city, how is this different from other places, and what can we enhance, what can we build here uh, as a community to really make the quality of life improve and make this a stable place. And so what emerged from there about the riverfront, specifically? <laughs> it, it was amazing. He mentioned the riverfront as one of the competitive advantages uh, for the city of Detroit. Yeah. And I would, I would wholeheartedly agree with that <laughs> assessment. <laughs> That's not just because you've been at the helm for about five years now, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Coming up on five years and taking over the reins of an organization that Faye Nelson built with love and sweat, yeah. uh, Matt Cullen and others, just tremendous leadership in our community. And what Faye did, you know, taking these abandoned spaces and turning them into beautiful parks, uh, what Matt's done with his leadership and the coalition he's built around this to support it, what Blue Cross and others have done to really show that uh, you know they care about their employees, they care about the citizens of Detroit is really remarkable. Yeah. So what what is new that's happening that we should all be aware of? Because I bet there's stuff that we don't need or can't know yet. But. That's right. Well, yeah. th- there are a lot of things that are going on right now. It's a very busy year for us, and the uh, you know the construction is always interesting. So, starting there, we're under construction right now with a project called Atwater Beach, and it sits right by Andrews, if you've gone and got perched at Andrews on the corner oh, yeah. or down by the Rattlesnake Club, right next to there, right next to Aretha Franklin Park. Uh, we're building a space that's going to be amazing for families. Imagine a huge sandbox. We'll have a barge with a bar on it. Uh, a lot of the seating is going to be designed, so you'll have old uh, you know, truck trailer beds you know, turned into planters <laughs> and benches. Cow. It's going to be really fun. Uh, but you know, what we realized is that there was a gap. You know, Families love the Rensen and the fountains there. They love Cullen Plaza and the carousel. They love the outdoor adventure center that the DNR has done. They love Mount Elliott Park. But each one of those is about a 10-minute walk from place to place. Mm-hmm. So there's one big gap right next to Shane Park. So we decided to turn this into a great family spot. So that opens up in July of this year, which is really exciting. And then one of the other projects we're working on right now that we're very excited about is in between Ralph Wilson Park and Joe Louis Arena. If you picture it in your mind, there there are those three towers. And it's a beautiful community, but it's a a private community. Yeah, yeah. And they really value their outdoor space. So we went to them about a year and a half ago and said, hey, yeah, wouldn't you like to be connected to the Riverwalk? Instead of isolated from it, wouldn't you like to be part of this system? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like to be able to expand? And they said, yeah, but you know, the privacy still matters. We worked with them for about a year, and we came up with a solution to build a boardwalk through the marina. So all of their private space stays private, but the public will be able to go from Ralph Wilson Park to Joe Louis Arena all the way to Belle Isle without having to walk around that building. So it's pretty exciting, yeah. and that's our construction right now as well. Yeah, and so when is part of your job it's not just negotiating. I mean, you, you are really trying to get everybody to the table. When you say it took a year, that's a long time to be patient. Yeah, a lot of community meetings, a lot of conversations with property owners. And it's been interesting. I mean, you go back to what Faye and Matt did originally, and they were really putting pictures of you know, vision yeah. in front of people. And there was a lot of skepticism. You know, for years, things have been taken away from Detroit. Uh, for years, people have come in and said, I'm going to do this big thing. 
And then they didn't do that big thing. So for, for Faye and Matt to deliver on those promises uh, has really set us up in a good spot. And I think that's one of the things people think of when they think of the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. As an organization, we have integrity, and we do what we say we're yeah, going to do. Yeah. Uh, so when we put a picture out there in the community, that's pretty much what it's going to look like in a couple of years. But it's a dedicated team. We're a nonprofit. We're scrappy. And we have tremendous uh, board of directors. Well, so when we think of uh, this podcast, A Healthier Michigan, we're thinking of not just walking, right? I mean, that's important. But when you look at this span you're talking about, you've got things that are happening along the way that are playful, that are fun. But you've got, what, moonlight yoga? I mean, you've got all kinds of things. So talk about some of the things that can encourage us to be healthy that are part of the riverfront. Well, that's one of the great things about a park or a place like the riverfront. It it feels special, so people want to be there. And when they show up there, you can kind of trick them into doing things that make them a little (laughs) bit healthier. Bring the community together. Break down some of those barriers. Blue Cross Blue Shield has been such an amazing leader in this space. They've been a huge contributor to the riverfront work. They sponsor the Fit Park, which is at the foot of the DeQuinter Cup, which everyone loves. Yeah. And, and it's amazing to see you have professional trainers out there. You have kids just climbing around and doing their thing. You have families coming down. People are really getting healthier on the walk. And we're excited this year to bring back Moonlight Yoga, which is one of the beloved events. Uh, we, we started calling this Gloga a long time ago because sometimes we bust out the glow sticks and you know, people are doing the yoga poses. But it's really a, a great opportunity. It's one of our most popular programs. This is the sixth year that we've done and it's a free program. We ask folks for donations, but you know, if you want to come down and do yoga or experience yoga, uh, it's the easy way to do it. Michelle Moten from Urban Solace runs the program for us and it's really a very exciting opportunity to explore the city. If you're a yoga person, it's great uh, to do yoga on the riverfront. If you're a riverfront person, it's great opportunity to try yoga and get a little mm-hmm. bit healthier mm-hmm. and then for you do you have a favorite is there a way that you're using i mean i've rented a bike at dequinter yeah. cut and take off and i so there are ways to do this where it may be a one-off but it's awesome oh I, absolutely I, I love fishing so okay anytime i can i drop a line in the water there and i love biking too so it's really fun to be able to cruise up and down and the dequinter cut connecting us to eastern market is just a, a wonderful amenity yeah uh, the city was a tremendous leader on that and eastern market's one of my other favorite places Yeah, so you really could get fit and then go eat. That's right. You know, but if you're going to work off the cows, you might as well find a good place to find some food, right? Check out the perch at Andrews, I guarantee (laughs) it. The Cajun perch at Andrews. Okay, good. That's a high... (laughs) Well, you you know, you already said it about the conservancy. We shake your hand, we can take it to the bank. So I think that's a high recommendation. (laughs) So what are some ways that folks can participate, not just dropping a buck and a hat somewhere? How can we help the conservancy? Well, we'd love for folks to just come down and participate in the programs. And, And as I mentioned, Moonlight Yoga, those programs are on July 17th, July 31st, and August 14th. So we'd love for folks to come down. And that's one of the things that we've realized is that, you know, you come down for that first trip, especially if you can bring a friend who's never been to the riverfront, that friend's going to tell somebody, they're going to tell somebody, and eventually it it builds and it grows into this great thing. The Riverfront Conservancy is also a nonprofit organization. So we love having folks join us as members. Uh, If you want to recognize a friend or a loved one or a special event, uh, we have one-time donations for pavers and benches. Uh, But we'd mostly like you to come down and experience the programs. Uh, If you feel like giving, it would be a wonderful thing to do as well. Yeah, we have a wedding in our family in about a month, a little less than a month. And we have a lot of family flying in from out of town on both sides, the in-laws and the outlaws. But we are doing the reception, uh, or I should say the the dinner, rehearsal dinner, on the riverfront. Purposefully, because we know there are people from out of town who are going to say, are you kidding? Which is the, (laughs) I can't wait to see the reaction. That's one of my favorite. You should have people post a selfie with the question, where am I? On the Detroit riverfront. That's a great idea. And, and uh, you blow people's minds. And, and you know, you've been in Detroit for a long time. I mean, that's one of the things we have to do as a community is show people what's different yeah. um, and change people's minds. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you, Mark. It's great to Thanks see so you. Thanks so much for yeah. all you do. Thanks so much. Next up is Michelle Hodges. Michelle has been president of the Belle Isle Conservancy since 2013. The mission of the Conservancy is to protect, preserve, restore, and enhance the natural environment, historic structures, and unique character of Belle Isle as a public park for the enjoyment of all. So Michelle Hodges is with us. It is good to see you. Good to see you too, Chuck. How are you doing here? Fantastic. It's always a good place to flex your muscle, right? Yeah, and (laughs) what does that mean in your world? I mean, is it... 
Yeah, I know it's a schmoozerama, but w- what are you doing here? Well, who are you trying to meet? There's so much power and purpose in aligning yeah. with people who are standing tall on behalf of our community. Yeah. And yes, we call it schmoozing, but it's so much more than that. Oh, I There's know so much is. substance going on and people yeah. that are really committed and wanting to make things happen. So that's our purpose for being here is one, being part of that Detroit ecosystem and feeling that stake and knowing who the people are that are getting things done yeah. and then being able to share our story too so that Bell Isle can stay strong. You're all dressed and you're ready to go, but when you're walking down this narrow hall in the dining room at the Grand Hotel, do you sense who's got, who's making things happen or you know who to look Chuck, for in advance? Chuck, it's you for goodness no, sake. It's not Where me. else would no, I be? I'm just right here to show you how to get going on this. No, really. Yeah, you didn't see the people I was tripping along the way. Those are the ones I was trying to get some time with. Okay, good. And then, of course, I'm the savior, right? Because I help them. I give them a Band-Aid for their boo-boo. There you and go. then, you know. Yeah, and by the way, can feel... I talk to you about something <laughs> yes, important like right. the conservancy, right? Well, no, you owe me now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so tell us about it. What is happening with the conservancy? So much. We're about, uh, I'd say, $50 million or so into a $330 million lift wow. for our 4.2 million visitors every year. So lots of great things going on. Uh, the overall park user experience is so much improved. Yeah. Uh, the things the park users can't see are gradually getting more improved, mm-hmm. like uh, water mains and electrical grid systems and gas okay. mains and that sort of thing. Uh, things that they will see include improvements to the Anna Scripps Whitcomb Conservatory. It's been closed intermittently over the last few months because we had some emergency structural repairs to make, mm-hmm. but thanks to the generosity of the DNR and the Ralph Wilson Foundation and others, we've been able to correct part of that problem and get part of the way there. So that's reopening in July. The aquarium continues to thrive. Uh, there's a speakeasy in the lower level of the aquarium, which is what? pretty cool. Yeah. Do I have to knock and say something Yes, special? you need a special code. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, you'll have to trip me to get it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That yeah, really it's pretty is. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we think about 4.2 million visitors, I heard just the other day, this is like the second most visited now park in America? State Park. State Park. Yes. Yeah. So yes, it's in Niagara Falls beat us out. Way so to go. Not we'll Niagara to, Falls, I mean us. Well, way to go us for yeah. sure. Yes, that deserves yeah. a high five. And where are you tracking demographics from how far and wide are you seeing people all Not over yet, the world? Not yet, just anecdotal information, but yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've heard all kinds of anecdotal stories about people who have a couple of hours to blow during a layover and they head from the airport and they come to Belle Isle. They want to see the rich heritage that we have there and the architectural treasures and and then of course all the natural treasures you can see eagles now there are little baby eaglets on the island yeah so yeah we see them from all over and you see a lot of people coming back who haven't been there in a while and certainly our most important customers are detroiter and we're so glad that they're able to use that park for their family reunions for for their recreation weddings. for their education for their weddings. weddings yes i've got kids in the wedding age and i know it's top of mind oh so i better yeah. be nice to you so you come and <laughs> celebrate see and people do celebrate life's moments on belle isle yeah uh, which really helps us understand our responsibility to the community. It's significant. So A Healthier Michigan is the name of our podcast. Yes. And being connected all the way to the Detroit River and then up to Belle Isle, great. Yep. But on the island itself, tell us about ways that people, I know people think of ways, let me put my bike on the back and I'm going, but tell us about other ways that you're seeing the island being used. Well, we are just what the doctor ordered, yeah. if you want a healthy lifestyle. And and when Ralph Wilson Foundation talks about sports sampling, my goodness, can you do that on Belle Isle? Everything from cricket to football to soccer to, to biking to kayaking to canoeing to baseball sure. to football to soccer to handball. You get my point? Wow. <laughs> You can do pretty much any uh, snowshoeing, yeah. snow skiing, you know, cross country skiing, ice skating. It all happens on Belle Isle. So it just depends who you are and what you are. And then, of course, people flex their philanthropy muscle on Belle Isle too because of all the 5Ks and 10Ks that yeah. happen on the island uh, to help those causes. So we like being part of that solution too. I am so glad you mentioned snowshoeing. This is not a joke. My wife is home right now getting the garage ready for the garage sale. I'm glad oh, I I'm thought you were going to say she was shoveling, and no, I was going to no, be no. worried. No, no, no. <laughs> and she puts my snowshoes in the middle of the garage. She said, do we really still need these? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I only use them once or twice a year, but yeah, when I do, they're For important. sure. Have you done, gone through the canals and I like under not. the bridges yet? I haven't done it yet either. It's on my bucket list. Maybe we can do it together, but that I've heard it's magical. Yeah. On a quiet winter day when it's softly snowing and you go through yeah. there, it's supposed to be pretty darn special. And by the way, all the canals are connected now, so you can navigate them with your kayak and your canoe. No and, kidding. Yep. And Lake Okanoka has been restored to its original. Uh, folks are seeing a lot of construction on Belle yeah. Isle right now, yeah. so that's the opportunity cost. But it means we're much healthier from an ecology standpoint than that, so 
We're happy about that, too, and glad people put up with it. When you talk about everything from handball to kayaking, how much equipment would I have to be? Do I have to be completely self-contained and bring it all with me, or what can I rent on the island? Uh, you can rent your kayak and your okay. bike on the island, yeah. but other things, pretty much, you need okay. to bring your own Sherpa with all that stuff loaded <laughs> yeah. up. But My that's exercise, too, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite of all of those things? You know, I'd have to say um, my favorite is running on the island because you can see it all and you get your healthy moment and you can support other causes. But what really makes me breathless beyond that heavy run or that intense run is seeing other people enjoy the island. That's my special moment. But look at your face. You've got this huge smile. This is really joyful to you, right? I mean, because you're seeing something that's just right before your eyes transforming. Yes, and yeah. it's so meaningful to the community. And it's so much more than just a place to recreate. Yeah. You do come to get healthy. You do come to learn. You do come to celebrate those moments that that we all have in our lives. So it's an honor and a privilege to be part of it. And we're very grateful to the community for supporting us. When you say running, what do you mean in your own context? So have you run here yet? I mean running so fast that you can't see me because it's like lightning, <laughs> of course. Yeah. But I mean, how far do you, are you like yes, a I two have to three miler this, a day? Are you a marathoner? What do you I do? run about about seven miles a day, so um, really? yeah, wow. and I've incorporated some you. walking because of an IT ban. But don't tell Belle Isle I'm here on Mackinac Island right now. I sort of feel like I'm two-timing her, <laughs> So, but I have really enjoyed seeing Mackinac, and that's a great way to experience it, yeah. is to go on a run or a, and it's not a like brisk walk. With hashtags and social media, anybody, including Belle Isle, will know you're here. I mean, it's <laughs> like everybody knows we're here, right? <laughs> right, they yeah. do. Yeah. And it's really hard when you're all sweaty and you have to sneak through the parlor to get to your room. That's not with a jacket back on, which is part yes, of the rules when you're here, right? <laughs> right. So here we come. Uh, we're on the countdown to the official start of summer. It feels like it, it's trying up here, but downstate, we kind of have felt the 80s, right? As we head to summer, tell us about special stuff we should be paying attention to. Oh, oh, goodness. Well, we have Kite Fest coming up. That's such a uniquely Detroit thing to yeah. do, and it's so beautiful when you see all those kites th- soaring through the sky and people of all types enjoying it. Uh, yeah. So that's awesome. We have our deeper dive coming up at the aquarium, so folks who want to celebrate that and see our new Cuban Gar exhibit. Uh, we have, oh, you know why you need to do that workout? It's because we're having a birthday party for the aquarium in August. I think it'll be 105 years old, so if you want to eat cake, oh, I, okay. you better burn some calories. I thought you were asking me to pop out of a cake. But well, you know. that's not a bad idea either. <laughs> okay, so I want an You end can be piece. in all your fitness yeah. uh, clothing. I'll, and I'll start jogging out. so I can eat the frosting. Oh, oh no, see, we're not going to get along because I'm a frosting girl too. Oh, yeah, I want so the I like corner sitting end by, piece. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to arm wrestle for it. Okay. Sorry. All Actually, right. I'll give it to you because you're Will such you? a great. All right. Yeah. Well, we, but there are four corners, so right. yeah. we can share, I guess. All right. So anything else we should know about the Conservancy is, and tell us how we can all support it. There are obvious ways that we hear about, but even some of the ways we're not quite aware of. That are well, the of biggest us. thing is to use it, of course. And yeah. then, uh, and and it, it is such a big lift to make things happen. Government can't do it alone. The DNR has brought so much acumen to the table, but uh, we have many fundraisers throughout the year that are special and unique. We have our Facebook page. We have BelleIslePark.org where they can okay. learn about things. Yeah. They can come to BelleIsleConservancy.org to learn more. So it's it's it, and volunteer for good and work for goodness sake. You can be a ranger. We need rangers. What do you mean? And, uh, can I raise to, my right hand and be sworn in? Yes, you can. What? We'll give you a great salute. And that's a great way that? to like work your health and fitness into your profession. This is so exciting. This go is to like Barney Park. Fife. I could get a badge. And, <laughs> you uh, can. Wow. We might even give you a tattoo. Or so. Actually, we gave all our special um, volunteers grata tattoos. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. So we can give you one of those, too. Well, it's good to see you, Michelle. Good to see you, too, Chuck. Congrats Appreciate the opportunity. Congrats on all the great success. Thank you so much. And now Dan Eckinger. Dan is the director of the Michigan DNR and was appointed to his current role in 2018. The DNR is committed to conservation, protection, management, use, and enjoyment of the state's natural and cultural resources for current and future generations. So Dan Eichinger is with us, DNR, good to see you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Are you having a good time at the policy conference? You know, I'm having a really good time. This is the first time I've been here, so, and I'm kind of an introvert actually by nature, so I wasn't entirely sure how how my energy was gonna be at the end of the week, but it's been really good, productive, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's been a pretty successful conference, I think, so. Well, we're glad your energy is up because we're we're with you at the end of the week, That's so right. we're ready for fun. Right. So, uh, big big deal this year, a centennial, yeah. right? 100 years. 100th anniversary, 100th birthday of the Michigan State Park System. Wow. 
And so what are the plans? What do you do for that? Well, we there's a lot of there's a lot of events that are happening in the parks this year. So we had a big event here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Interlochen State Park was the first state park that was created under the the old Michigan State Park Commission. That was a bill that was signed into law by Governor Albert Sleeper in 1919. Oh, I remember him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we, we had a nice event uh, out at Interlochen State Park uh, here a couple of weeks ago, the day before we had the governor over at uh, Grand Haven State Park. Just to kind of remind people that uh, our state parks are here. It's part of Michigan's legacy, uh, and it's been the backdrop for all kinds of memories that Michigan citizens have created over that period of time. And I'm glad you mentioned that because on your website you've got a memory map, We right? do, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's our memory map. Okay. We're asking folks to share their story and share their experience that they've had in our state park system. You know, natural resources uh, and places like our state parks have inherent value all on their own. But when people project a part of their life on that place, it has even you know deeper and more special meaning. Um, so we just want to try and create, you know, our state parks are all about that story. And yeah. It's all about people and, and their experience there. And we just want to, we really want that to be the focus of the celebration this year. I think when a lot of people think of state parks in any state, they think that that's just a static system. It's already been built. It's just from some other time and we happen to be visiting it. And while that's true, going back to Governor Sleeper, it's always expanding. The trail systems continue to grow paving of old railway trails you know it just keeps on growing and getting better every day yeah there's a lot uh, there's a lot of innovation that happens uh, in the parks and recreation space we know people play outside differently than they have in the past so one of the things I'm really I was really surprised to learn is that most folks know what fat tire biking is now yeah five years ago nobody knew what that was and we're expecting uh, within the next year or two that fat tire biking is going to overtake cross-country skiing and popularity as a winter sport. No kidding. So that requires a little bit different trail system, a little bit different management framework. So we're constantly trying to innovate towards where the growth is in outdoor recreation. When you see somebody with fat tires, do you still kind of look at it and either chuckle or and think? I do because I'm a cross-country skier. So. Yeah. <laughs> I still look and I marvel. Like It, it just looks so different. It you is. Know? It yeah. Is. Have you done it though? Have you no, tried it? No, I haven't. We, we used to have a neighbor who was real into biking and, yeah. and he got way into fat tire biking. So it's one of the winter sports I haven't taken up. We're still pretty hardcore skiers in my house. So there's another thing that I appreciate about going on a trail or going to a park, and that is that while we all get accustomed to a map, maybe even here in the Grand Hotel, that shows the red dot that you are here, I know that I can find those red dots, if you will, in the park system, but it's kind of nice for me anyway to know that I don't have to know exactly where I am, but I still know I can get out. So if I overestimate my time and I allow for a little breathing room, you really can't escape whatever is giving you pressure in the world, whatever's going on, because you know you'll find your way out of the trail. I just kind of like the idea that, not in a grand sense I'm lost, but that I can find some peace and quiet. Well, and that's the thing about our state park system with 103 state parks and recreation areas across the state. You know, some folks, they charge their batteries by going to a super busy beach over on Lake Michigan. Other yeah. folks want to find that little, you know, that little slice of Michigan where they can get lost for a while. Um, and our our park system can offer that for everybody and more. Mm-hmm. And you can also talk about urban centers, right? I Absolutely. Mean, you, you, right from downtown to Quindercut, you can head up from uh, now the riverfront is expanding. So pretty soon we will be able to just get in Detroit and turn our bike north or south and either head to D.C. or head all the way up into the U.P. That's why I think one of the big growth areas for us in the state park system, when we think about where we need to be expanding, um, in some of our urban areas, the Department of Natural Resources in our state park system hasn't been particularly present. So now we have Belle Isle Park down in uh, yeah. down in Detroit. The success that we've had there is really, I think, motivating us to take another look at some of those places uh, where we haven't been as present and we should be, where folks need to get connected to nature in Saginaw, Flint, Benton Harbor, Muskegon. Uh, we've got a great state park in Muskegon, but just finding those places where historically we haven't been there and think about how we can... Uh, we can start to nest some of our our parks and recreation resources so that everybody in the state of Michigan has an opportunity to find themselves and get lost
house for a little while. So is that really the motivation for the centennial, or are there other ways you would encourage people to celebrate the 100 years, to just use the parks? That's the first way, right? Go, fall, yeah. you know, fall in love. If you fell in love with them as a kid, take your kids there, go fall in love with them all over yeah. again. Um, we've got a ton of events planned for the year. We've got 5Ks. We've got strolling beer dinners. We've got cornhole tournaments. We've got campfire storytelling. We've got things going on in the parks throughout the season. Uh, we really encourage folks to uh, hop on our website and, and find a park close to you or a park far from you uh, and go and visit and take part in one of those events. And every once in a while, you may see an animal you're not used to seeing. Absolutely. You know, right? Absolutely. Which is delightful, especially when you're with kids. I mean, we marvel in our neighborhood because we have a small pond in the back and uh, that turns into a lake. But we'll marvel that we've got swans and baby swans. And when I go to the park, I'm seeing wild turkeys. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing foxes. I mean, it's amazing, really. Well, that's the fun thing for me. I mean, I've seen a lot of wildlife over the course of my career. I've I've seen a lot of nature over the course of my career. But with our kids, my wife and I, we... Uh, we love taking our kids to these places because you see them through their eyes and yeah. it's, a, it's as though you're experiencing again for the first time. So, you know, not only getting yourself back to the park, but take someone with you, take a kid with you, take a neighbor, a friend, whoever, um, and help to introduce them to, to what we have here in Michigan. So after I leave you, we leave together maybe today, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to head back downstate, turning around, coming back up on Sunday to meet my brother. We'll probably head over to Sleeping Bear Dunes. Okay. Uh, or we may hit the trail outside of Tustin, south of Cadillac. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do some more fun stuff. Rain or shine, doesn't matter to us. But as you look at the state, if you wanted to be an encourager of specific, give us a few spots on one hand. What would you say we should think about for the summer? I grew up on I grew up on the west side of the state, so I grew up just a couple miles down the road from Holland State Park, okay. and that's one of the busiest parks that we have. It's a great place to go, especially if you love the beach and you love sand. But I love finding some of those parks that are a little bit off the beaten path. So Hef State Park up in the northeastern part of the state, Clear Lake State Park, uh, Hartwick Pines is a phenomenal park. Mm-hmm. It's real easy to get to. We've got big timber, real tall eastern white pine trees. I mean, there are, our parks are so diverse in what they offer. Um, They're all over the state. Some are easy to get to, some are a little, you have to work a little bit harder, but that's part of the fun. Is the lighthouse by South Haven, is that part of a state park or is that just something by itself? I know I've biked in there from... Yeah, I think that's part of something else. More often than not, the Army Corps of Engineers owns the... Oh, they, okay. they own the they own the infrastructure that the lighthouses sit on. I so, see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you guys had it all. We have some lighthouses in our yeah. system. In fact, yeah. we were just up at Leland State Park here, oh, like you know, a week and a half ago, and there's a fabulous lighthouse out there. And the interpretation that's done inside the lighthouse is great storytelling. That's one of our favorite things to do is go find lighthouses in Michigan, also, because it just gets you off the beaten path and. Uh, you learn a little bit more about you know, local history, maritime history in Michigan. Yeah. And so, have you heard they do a great job with wine up there? I have heard. <laughs> I have heard. And I have some firsthand experience with that, too. <laughs> some of the late harvest Rieslings may be the best around. I so. agree. Yeah. Dan, good to see you. Thank you very much. And again, happy uh, centennial anniversary to uh, the DNR and our park system. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Thanks very much for having me. And finally, Reverend Faith Fowler. Faith is both the pastor of Cass Community United Methodist Church and the executive director of Cass Community Social Services, a nonprofit agency that provides food, housing, medical, mental health, and employment programs for people living in areas of concentrated poverty. She has held these positions since 1994. So, Faith Fowler, good to see you. Great to see you. So much of what you do has to do with food, and I I have to ask, because this is a Healthier Michigan podcast, I saw you walking by with a box lunch of sorts. I saw a banana, so I know it was healthy. Yeah, well, I'm a vegetarian. You're not always sure what's going to be in the box, and so I always grab a banana if I can. Yeah? Yeah. Was there enough there that... It was was good, yeah. It was good? Sure. Yeah, okay. So tell us about Cass Community Services. So much of what you center efforts around and your great team is really in dealing with food, the poverty and then the lack of food in our community. Yeah, so CAS actually started as a part of CAS Methodist Church and began its outreach with a food program during the Great Depression that has never stopped. Wow. Uh, we've fed every day since then, oh. uh, now three meals a day, seven days a week, 700,000 meals a year. So we do a lot of feeding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so over the course of time, tell us some of, not just anecdotally, what, what are you seeing in terms of what people think is a great economy, and uh-huh. for some it is, but tell us some of the hidden things that maybe we're not hearing about. 
Well, first of all, we're seeing more and more women and children who mm. are homeless, uh, which breaks your heart. And yeah. you think that they would be lifted up as the economy is uh, improving. But the, it hasn't been so true in terms of the numbers that we're dealing with. We're also seeing more and more people working part-time or minimum wage jobs who have an income but just not enough to really make it through the month. Yeah. And so often they're coming to us to augment their supplies at home, so to speak. And uh, so that's a, there's a real story there that hard-working people, they're getting by but just barely. But if you're a single mom with a few kids, even uh, I just heard the stat, it's seventeen, eighteen thousand $18,000 a year. You are barely able after taxes to, to yeah. lead a life and take care of everybody, yeah. including yourself. Well, what, what we know from the last census is that a third of the city makes less than $15,000 wow. a year. So yeah, yeah. we have hordes of people, large numbers of people who really just don't have enough. And the kind of food that you're serving, I know that you'll, you get donations, but you also have a farm-to-table program. So we're entering the season now where we're, you know, Michigan is great for growing things. Yes. Yeah, so we, we have community gardens and we have a greenhouse that extends the season just slightly. Okay. So it's a good time to eat tomatoes and cucumbers and squash and all the things that grow so well in Michigan. And, and many, many volunteers come and help us plant and weed and water and then ultimately pick. Yeah. Is that still a uh, an issue for folks that are stricken with poverty and are dealing with this issue for their kids that they don't have as much access to the fresh type food that we would think is yeah. just available anywhere? Right. So so we do have grocery stores in Detroit in addition to the newer ones that yeah. you know about, yeah. right? And uh, But getting to them if you don't have a car can be a, a problem. Uh, so far too many people shop at the local uh, liquor store or gas station. Um, and far too many people are buying the cheaper meals. By that, I mean processed food yeah. that have a high concentration of salt, which is and horrible for us, and, and sugars, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, poor people are eating uh, less desirable food. And the freight farm, what, what is the history of that farm? Ah, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, Ford Motor Company has a group called 30 Under 30. They're sort of the brightest and the best in the corporation, and they come up with solutions to social problems. Okay. And so a group of young people uh, working on the food issue suggested this to us, and we fell in love with it. It takes an old shipping container, 40 by 10 by 8, and converts it into a farm so that you're growing vertically, like on blinds. And it gives you a large uh, space to work with to grow year-round. And wow. that's key, because even though urban gardens are good, even great, you're stuck in Michigan, June yeah. to September. This allows us to grow every day of the year. So we're able to serve in our soup kitchen lettuces and greens and herbs all year long that are picked and served within 20 minutes. So is that because the container lid is down? So in the colder weather months, you're still acting as a greenhouse? I'm yeah, trying to understand so, how you're extending so you're, the you're, season. You're growing inside. Yeah. Oh, so it yeah, doesn't matter right. what's going it, it can be a, a blackout. It can be a snowstorm. It can be severe heat with no rain doesn't matter because you're growing inside and consequently you're able to um, use 90 percent less water than you would traditionally uh, use led lighting and so uh, the cost of lighting is very low and and we've got it hooked up to solar but the other really uh, wonderful thing. Well, there are a couple really good things. One is that you don't have to use any herbicides or pesticides because you're growing in a controlled environment. And two is you can farm from anywhere. You can you control the water and the nutrients using your smartphone. You can be in Florida, which is my kind of farming, by the way, and, <laughs> and be a farmer, you know, in Michigan and yeah. Detroit. The other thing is because we're growing year-round and serving locally, you don't have to pay for food to come, you know, from California right. or Florida. Uh, so it's fresh. And you're not, you know, using all that gasoline to get it to the table. Just fantastic. Yeah, it really is a, a wonderful concept. And and you can grow in that farm, uh, 40 by 10 by 8, the equivalent of 1.8 acres of farmland. So it's just a monster for producing food yeah. ongoing. You're, every week you're starting a new crop. And you can extend your season how long then? From into the cold weather months. There all year? No oh, there is no season. Yeah. It is all year. Okay. Yeah. The reason I'm stuck on that is because my brother, who's up north here in Michigan, he built some greenhouses along the side of the house where the lids come up and down, right, like right. Oh, they mm -hmm. move up and down. He's growing lettuce in the middle of February. And nice. I, I couldn't put my mind around this until I saw what he did. So yeah. it's a similar idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, think about it. I mean, people eat as often as we eat, poor people do in the, the soup kitchen, right? So used to be 
be. We got to November, December, January, February. For months, they'd go with with boxes and cans of, of food, which is not good. Yeah. And homeless people, as you might know already, they're dealing with hypertension and heart disease sure. and diabetes, and all of that is made worse by bad food choices. Yeah. So the the idea of being able to come visit and be fed. Uh, are you allowing people to take any of this food home with them if they do have a home? They're not so homeless? So the health department won't let us let food go Even out a tomato. that way, okay. right? Uh, well, a tomato, if it's not been cooked, you can get away with okay. it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we do box uh, food for people who have kitchens and places okay. to adequately prepare their food. Yeah. yeah. And when it comes to the fitness side of this, is there anything you're doing to impact the clients you're seeing? And, and let's talk about yourself, outside of the obvious, which is we're all getting in our however many thousand steps we are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at there, yeah. buddy. <laughs> are you tracking? Yeah. 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 Do you have a goal every day? Uh, 10,000. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You hit it? Uh, most days. <laughs> yeah. And the, Thank God for my dog, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, because you know what? They take us for a walk, That's don't right. they? That's Every right. day. I've Every got, night, I've got yep. two, so some days I'm crossing <laughs> lines. I'm not quite sure yeah. where I'm supposed to go. Mm-mm. When you see the folks that you have coming to visit you, healthy eating is one part of this. Are mm-hmm. you doing anything to encourage the... So we have a gym. We have a green gym. Uh, actually, it's shut down temporarily, but we've, we're creating a park uh, that has a walking, running, jogging space and, and some recreation places as well of basketball and volleyball and yeah. horseshoes and that so to get people moving is is really good are you still able are you still taking tires and recycling we them are, so yeah are you our green do any kind industries of a, is up to uh, no no uh, obstacle course with yeah, the tires or a base no. of, so i can jump up and down and be cushioned yeah <laughs> no no we're not doing that but tell everybody about that because it's an amazing thing so we started in 2007 uh, picking up illegally dumped tires to give work jobs to people and since then we've been recycling not only rubber but paper, cardboard, glass, wood, uh, and started our solar installation program through through Green Industries, and we've got 82 people working in it now. So it really has grown into a, a nice little business. That's wonderful. Well, yeah. it's great to see you. Much good. success. You're, you're such a blessing to ah. our community, and it's uh, so good to see you up here. It's always good to see you too, Chuck. Thanks, Faith. Thank you. Thanks for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show, you want to know more about old episodes, new episodes that are coming, check us out online at a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can always leave us a review or a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, and you can get some of those other episodes, new or old, on your smartphone or tablet. Be sure to subscribe to us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app.